Hello and Hello. welcome. Thank you, Derek. Uh, I will pop that on the screen. Thank you. Today I am joined by Derek Griffins, the author and maintainer and all around nice person surrounding X Debug. How are you, Derek? I'm good yourself. It's been a beautiful <laughs> day today. It has, which has made yeah. my video setup a little bit more difficult than I wanted it to be. But yeah, I've we, been ha I've been hacking on SSL related stuff all day, so there we go. Oh, nice. Any nice long walks today? You've been walking the tube station, right? Oh yeah, not today. Uh, that's usually a weekend thing, so that's oh, back nice. uh, for Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, the plan is to walk uh, the length of all the London tube lines. <laughs> yeah, no easy feat there. Yeah, it's just not. It's not hard. It just takes a long time. Yeah. yeah. So today you've uh, very graciously offered to join me uh, and teach me how to profile PHP applications with mm -hmm. XDebug. Right. All right. Excellent. So before we get started on that, what I would like to do is say that. We do have a Discord where people can come and chat and leave questions. You are also very welcome to leave questions on YouTube. However, if you are feeling brave and you wish to pop into the stream and join us live to ask your question and have a short discussion, then we will try and fit that in towards the end. If you want to do that, drop me a message on Discord and we will try to sort it out. Now, to get started today, uh, we need my screen to be shared. And we will do this. And by the power of magic, we are in. So I'm starting off no. with a pretty. Sorry, did you say something there, Derek? No, I just need to make sure that I increase the font size on this because I can't read that. There we go. That's a bit better. Yeah, so the font size on the sidebar, I do not know how to make that bigger without zooming in on the whole thing because I think it's like an electron app, I can't remember what code is, but the text editor should be nice and large for us. Yes, okay. that I can read. Excellent. And, and hopefully your terminals as well. <laughs> yeah, my terminal. Oh, that's easy peasy. <laughs> you know, I I just now leave it like this all the time. So even when I'm coding on my own and it's not for a stream, I just present it with this massive text. And you know, it's, it's oddly satisfying. Like I don't need to see 14 functions at once. I just need to see. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's true, and it is like funny how that goes. Let me uh, actually put my face uh, in your whole screen because you've cut me <laughs> off a little bit. There we go. Oh, how rude! Sorry about that. In live, moving your face to the center of the screen. Pretty. <laughs> now you can't see my lovely background. We can see bits of it. Don't worry. I can, I can see it. Okay. Um, so I'm starting from a clean slate today. Uh, yeah. Anyone who's watched this stream before will know that I have a lot of PHP experience. But I haven't really got any modern PHP experience. I haven't really written mm -hmm. a lot of PHP in the last uh, four to five years, which means that my computer setup right now comes with whatever the Mac gives me. So I have PHP 7.3, and I installed Composer through Brew. But I haven't done anything else. Nothing else is done in advance of this session. Do you have any um, homebrew setups or not? I do have homebrew available. We can install anything that we need to get going. Yeah. So get rid. Of, get first thing I would always recommend: get rid of the PHP that comes with the Mac because I don't know what I've done to it, but it doesn't behave <laughs> as it should. It doesn't behave as it should. Okay, it even so... tells. It even. It even tells you when you type PHP, right? So yeah, because I'm also running Big Sur, living life on the edge. It now says PHP is not recommended, but I think what they actually mean is it's no longer going to ship by default with the next version. So. It's mm. a really terrible message, or some developer having a very bad joke. Yeah. So can I just do brew install PHP? Yes. I think so. I don't use a Mac. I'm just guessing it. Uh, I don't really use a Mac either. It's something that I took on as part of my new role with Packet, and mm. I'm still very much getting used to it. I miss my tiling window manager, that's for sure. Yeah. OK, so let's go over the plan while that homebrew right. does this brew thing. Okay. So I, okay. So I lied. I have set a couple of things up. So when we were talking, I got a fear yesterday, Derek. I should say when you tweeted mm. me saying, "I hope you've got a slow PHP application," and I was like, "Shit!" I never thought about what we'd actually profile. <laughs> so I got my thinking hat on, and I figured we could start with a really 
trivial, trivial example where we would right. run a prof profiler on a one line Hello World application. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we're going to lot out of it, but I think just to see the tooling and the setup and a simple call graph may be beneficial. At least for me, I want to see it in the simplest form before we break it with the, the harder stuff. Okay. I then thought about how can we make it a little bit more interesting? And I thought, well, recursion is generally interesting when it comes to profiling. So I created a very small factorial function that is recursive, and we can throw some different values into this. And I okay. thought, depending on how we get on with that, really, I should have run this plan through you beforehand, but we'll just do that. Yeah. I thought we could inject uh, some arbitrary errors um, where we add a sleep. Now, we won't mm -hmm. do this now, but I thought if we can, I, I want to see if we can use the profile to identify what is causing certain bottlenecks rather than just as the factorial function randomly, can we narrow that down? I don't know. It just. Yeah, we'll stopped. see. Do you then have I'd... a profiling front end installed? Hmm, you didn't think about that either, did you? <laughs> VS Code, I'm assuming it has some sort of front end. Nah, it's got a deep no, no, it doesn't do profiling front ends. Luckily, I have a homebrew formula for you there, too. OK, all right. That I just Googled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, so uh, next, I, I set aside four examples. The next one being, I figured we could do a composer with a really small composer JSON. You can see I just got two packages here. And we can actually profile composer itself before yes. tackling something much larger. Now, this is just a project I found on GitHub called Sulu. It seems to be like a CMS system built on Laravel or Symfony. I can't remember. It's Symfony. And it has a lot of dependencies, or at least it's quite hefty. And I did run a Composer install before this and then blew away the vendor folder and the log file. It took around a minute, I believe. So hopefully that gives us something substantial that we can take a look at the call graph and the profiles, et cetera. Yeah, it's usually the, the, the having the caches available is not usually the problem uh, because that's you're just waiting for network I.O. And who cares about that? Um, exactly. I'm more interested in the dependency okay, graph right. resolution and right. how long that takes. Yeah. So for that, it's actually better to have the cache in place. But we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> Excellent. So what do I need to do first? All right. Uh, let's have a look back at your terminal, whether you actually have PHP going now. Uh, we have 7.4.10 just yeah, coming down good. the pipe now. So. All right. Well, if you wouldn't mind starting another terminal where you can add some more things, Indeed. then we then it can run that while we uh, when we do actual things. Okay. So there's a home oh, so brew install and then it's called Q cache grind. Uh, Q, Q the letter Q and a <laughs> cache grind. Cache grind. Grinds. Yeah. No. Without yes. Cache grind. Is that all? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, whether it works is to be seen, but. Uh, so what is this that I'm installing? It is a front end for, for Xdebug specifically or profiles in general? It's actually not specific for Xdebug. The profiling format that Xdebug outputs is actually something that comes out of Velgrind's tooling. Velgrind is like a low level mem memory profiling CPU emulating tool that also allows you to make profiles of uh, C programs or C++ programs. And because I don't know how to write frontends, especially not nice looking functional graphical frontends, I just stole the format for Xdebug so that it uses the same. We don't really have to look at this. Uh, for now, we first need to get the profiler going. So just let it sit in the background for a while and let's see what we're going on. All right, so, okay, that's, still, so. that's still the wrong one, right? Because um, where did it install PHP? Or did, where did Brew install it? It may want me to do a Brew link. OK. Oh, in fact, it probably just wants me to pop open a new terminal, doesn't it? So. Yeah, so this is the intricacies that I don't really know. Ta-da, magic, right. There, there we go. go. OK, so uh, is, is Peckle available with this or not? P-E-C-L. Can you just type in and see what it is? Otherwise, you might. Yeah, excellent. So, Peckle install xdebug. And this is me installing the PHP extension xdebug, right? 
Yes. Yeah. There used to be homebrew formulas for all the extensions, but they stopped doing that. So you now have to uh, use Packle to install these things. No, you get a few errors, but it just ignore them. <laughs> That's great advice in general, I feel. It's just, this is just, a st the, so Macs tout themselves as being Unix, but it is kind of weird. But yeah, now we have to wait for it to it's So I have, it. <laughs> I have no, anticipated no. us running into some sort of uh, Mac issues. And I did spin up uh, a Linux machine on Packet Cloud, just in case we need it. So, so there's somebody asking in chat, would WebGrind Docker container would also work as good as Qcache Grind? Uh, I don't think so. I think WebGrind is good for, oh, fancy. <laughs> you got the questions on here. Yep. Um, so WebGrind is also a useful tool, but it is not nearly as powerful as Q Q Cache Grind or the, the variant that I use is called K Cache Grind, which is the same tool, but with a slightly different looking from that. The K stands for a KDE and the Q stands for QT. Of course, as you know, KDE is just a shell around QT or Qt or whatever people want to pronounce that. But um, no, I I don't think a WebGrind container or WebGrind in general is as nice or as useful as a QCache grind or cache cache grind. However, it's a lot easier to pronounce. <laughs> I'll give it that. All right, did it, did it install? Yes, we have both available now. We have QCache grind and I have okay. Xdebug enabled in my PHP LA. Okay, can you minus V? Yeah. Just do minus V. Minus E? V for v. Victor. Yeah. It shows up. Excellent. Now, the only thing that you might have to be careful of is that Xdebug is loaded after opcache. And in your case, it's loaded before opcache. Now, this shouldn't cause any problems with profiling, but I would advise not to have them this way around. OK, so do, should we change that in the PHP any? Yeah, so if you type PHP minus minus I and I, two minuses. It will tell you which files it loads. And you see that what Peckle has done is installed it into PHP I and I. But mm -hmm. it really should have put it in a separate file like xopcache has done. I don't, I don't know why the Peckle tool doesn't do that. So okay, what we need to do is put it there. What we need to do is remove it from PHP I and I. Yeah, at the top, it's at the top. First line, yep. delete, del delete this line. And I'll just save the file. And now create this new file that is called ext-xdebug. Not any. Yep. And then the thing that you just removed, paste it back in there. <laughs> okay. Zend underscore extension equals xdebug. Uh, I would not recommend spaces or quotes. Think so? Get rid of the quotes. Don't, don't need them. <laughs> I love. The reason why I say don't use quotes is because people copy and paste this from websites, and invariably the quotes have been replaced by the curly quotes, and then it doesn't work. So I would always say, I I, I do the minimalist approach. If you don't need it, don't enter it. Anyway, PHP minus V should now have it the right way around. Ta-da. And I'll verify whether that's what it does here. There we go. So ideally, the Peckle tool knows about these things and uh, does these things right, but it doesn't. That's why I think the homebrew formulas also have been kept because they'd handle these things correctly. Anyhow, okay. it is loaded. Excellent. Now we just need to enable the profiler. And how okay. do we do that? Uh, <laughs> open up the any file that you've just created. Yep. And add a new line saying profiler. Sorry, xdebug dot. 
underscore enable equals one. And if you now type a PHP minus minus RIX debug, no, with a space yeah. after the I, sorry. And uh, if you scroll up a little bit, you can. So it, the line that I was interested in, scroll up three, three or four more. There we go. So it tells you the profile is on, what the output directory is. Is that a valid directory? Yes. You type it. <laughs> it's empty, even better. OK. So now if you request your PHP script, it should create a profile file. So if you type PHP, space the name of your scripts. Okay, okay, so I go into my Hello World directory. Yep. And I can just do PHP main.php. Yes. And by magic, I'll have a profile. Yes. You have a profile file, oh, exactly. <laughs> now, what I if you do this for websites, I would actually recommend you turn on the trigger instead and install a browser extension. But uh, we might have a look at that later. Uh, yeah, if sure. we have time. In any case, we have this cache grind.out file. Do you want to open it? Let's see what's in there. Uh, bar and cash grind. Okay. Well, what do you see here? Uh, I see the command that was run or the script. Uh, mm -hmm. I see. Oh, so it's got some events, which I guess are the function calls with some numeric yep. values. Okay. So the, the numeric values are basically an index number so that the next time it sees the same file, it wouldn't include a file name and just include a number. It's just a clever way of basically like an index creation. But it doesn't matter. It's just a way of the format works. Um, and then we have the 1, 188, and 32. That's the basically stands for line 1. It took 188 uh, microseconds. I hope it's not milliseconds for Hello World. Yeah, Pretty sure it's microseconds. And then it took 32 uh, bytes of memory. And then you get the yeah. summary that it, the whole full execution took 1.4 milliseconds, and it took 431 bytes, uh, bytes of memory. However, this is not how you'd look at these files, right? And you just want to make sure that the first time you do that, we have a look at this to see what is actually in here. But uh, the yeah, way cool. how I would view this is by using Qcache grind, or in my case, Qcache grind. So Qcache grind. <laughs> and then specify the file name behind it. Stuff. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Can you uh, make this bigger? I also don't know how to zoom in there. Is this not something that your, your operator system provides? So I could do this. Uh, that makes yeah, it weird. That changed <laughs> absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. We'll try and make it work. OK. Can you at least make it full screen now so we don't get distracted by QCache coins error messages? Oh, dear God, this is small. How do I make this bigger for myself so I actually can see it? So maybe there's an electron uh, file grain, cache grain thing that we could use, uh, which would allow me to zoom, or maybe a web one that could open. Anyway, I've, yeah, I, if it's full screen, it works for me. I can have just about see this. But yeah, there's not a lot of information in here. And on the so on the, on the left-hand side, you have all the function calls, when in this case is only main, <coughs> because, yeah, there's Sorry. <coughs> because you didn't call any functions. On the right-hand side, you have uh, a few tabs. If you click on source code tab, that's the fifth one, you can actually see your source code. So that's handy. But echo is not a function call, so you can't really see anything in here. So it doesn't really do. It, show you, it can't show you more because there's nothing to show. Right, so, so our 
wrap the echo in a function call? Just yeah, sure. Absolutely. OK. So what we're saying is that's not very interesting. But if we do function my echo string, well, I can do this now, right? Uh, and then we could do echo string. You could do that since PHP 7.0 already. Which has been out for five years. Okay, so if I yep. run this again, we'll get a new profile. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, we can open this. Yeah, it's open. So there, there's actually a trick that it doesn't change the file name because that's a moment it uses the process ID. Okay. Which is what cache crying standard way of doing things are, but you don't have to do it. And there's ways of changing the output format so that if you run it from the same directory, it will always be the same file. If you want to do that. Yeah, it might make it a bit easier for today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See if we take right. LS a lot. Okay, open the any file again then. Okay, user. Uh... Just control uh, R. Just control R. Uh, so I did, but the problem is I have pair directory history. So I need to go up and then do them. <laughs> oh, OK. So <laughs> that is usually a feature, but not at the moment. Yes. <laughs> so the setting is xdebug dot profiler. Profiler underscore. underscore output underscore name. Equals, and now you cache crying dot out dot. I wasn't <laughs> quite done yet. Don't go ahead of yourself. Dot percent C. So the thing, the thing behind the percent sign is a formal specifier, and the documentation lists a whole bunch of them. The C stands for the uh, CRC thirty two of your current working directory. Whereas by default, be the P, which is your process ID, but there's a whole bunch more, such as the full, uh, the, like the, the HTTP URL, for example. If you want so to that add. means that if I, so I could have done that without the percentage C, right? But it means if I change the directory and profiled something else, then it would okay. overwrite that last profile. So this incorporates the file name or directory path into that. Is that right? Just uh, the directory path at the moment, yeah. All right, yeah. OK. But yeah, you can also do the parts and other things. There's a whole bunch of settings if you want to look at the documentation. Yep. OK, so if I run that again. Now you should have, of course, a third one. <laughs> yep. Which is to, but that one will never change. Oh, okay. once you run it from this directory. And now, you, as you can see, you have two functions, right? Uh, yes, we do. Okay, so our source code is going to be updated, and we have mm -hmm. two calls over here. So we've got main yeah. followed by the my echo. Okay, cool. Right. So there's a few interesting columns here, which will be more interesting once we have some more function calls. But on the left hand side, you have inclus inclu. It says all the way to the left, all the oh, way. To yep, 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 yep. Okay, yeah, include. In Incl stands for inclusive, not include. Inclusive. Okay. And self stands for uh, self. So basically, what these things mean that Inclusive means all the time spent in this function and all the functions it has called, whereas self says only the time spent in this function. So theoretically, in simple examples, if you add all the self times, uh, if you add them all together, it should end up at 100%, which, which at does. the moment it does. <laughs> There is, of course, often rounding errors in there. And there's recursion in there that makes that not work. But in a simple example, that should all add up to 100 because, well, you can't spend time twice, right? OK, makes sense. OK. <clears throat> and then on your right-hand side, uh, there is, for example, click on Kali map. OK, yep. and now something doesn't render for me correctly. Because the whole um, screen should be blue. Uh, so the left hand side, which looks white on the preview, is green for me with the little bit on the blue. So it's like the that seems to represent the self values mapped out the colors. 
Yep, pretty much true. So this is a way of seeing in one overview is the things that have a large area stacked on top of stuff is where a lot of time is being taken. So in this case, what you would expect 80% is spent in just main, where that is mostly overhead of parsing it, to be fair. And then on the and then the 20% should be the, the blue bit that is then the my echo. Yep. Perfect. And if we have more interesting things, we can see more interesting information. But there you go. Now, on the bottom half, if you click on call graph, all the way, all the, way in the bottom, there we go. Let's hope that works better. Did you actually uh, click on call graph? It's working for me, but it's not updating on. <laughs> oh, I just okay, have to okay. change, change screen and then magically. <sighs> Hey, yeah. yeah. Sorry, what can I say? Thing. Yeah, I've never seen that issue before, but hey, as now we know it, we can work around it. <laughs> yes. But yeah, you can see the call graph. Basically, you see in the graph which functions calls which function, how often and how much time was spent in these functions. And that, once we have something more interesting to show, will tell us what is taking up uh, the most amount of time or what is uh, the slow path to be, uh, to be precise. So shall we find a example that is more interesting than Hello World? That sounds like a good idea. I agree. So if we take a look you at our to, factorial. You, you need oh. to do the screen switch <laughs> thing again. Uh, that is peculiar. OK. Uh, how about my factorial functions? That should be. You mentioned okay. recursion as we went through the hello world one there and said that the values may not add up. So I guess I was fortunate enough that I had some recursion. Would you please add the braces around the return? No, the top one, mm -hmm. the ones in line five and seven. <laughs> was that needed or is that personal? Uh... It's also not changing, by the way. Well, that is, let's just turn off my screen share and then reshare. That is weird. Uh, you get to admire the uh, Tower Bridge at night for a moment here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if I, yeah, okay, I think we're okay. okay. So not a personal, well, yes, personal preference, but in the XDBook version that you still run 2.9, with all the PHP versions, it sometimes gets line numbers on the wrong places. And okay. hence, step debugging and profiling looks strange, although it is something that PHP internally does. So I would always suggest to other braces. It's also what in is there in most coding standards. All right. Today I learned. Good. Yep. All so right, let's run it. Pick a number. 721. So because my PHP is a little rusty, um, I wasn't sure about reading input. So I had just decided to pull it from the environment, <laughs> which is why we're using this sometimes. OK. That's brilliant. Oh. Is it? <laughs> it looks like an error. Uh, can you scroll up? Let's see what you've done. Oh, it's because I've not casted it to an end. Although it worked when I oh, yeah, yeah. tested this code. That's not how you cast an int. <laughs> you you do int in between parentheses in front of what you're casting. It's not go. Are you sure it's not go? That's, that's yeah. what I write mostly these days. OK, so to cast it. No, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put, in, put in in parentheses. <laughs> Oh, and um, oh, like C, like, OK, got it. Uh... Yes, like C. There we go. That's how you do that. <laughs> um, the first if, if that's one is true, factorial of a negative number is one? If less than or equal to one, return one. That's OK. OK. Right? I think so. <laughs> and Let's and run it. Next number. I did test this okay. code, I let's do this the let's do this the proper way. Okay, open up your PHP file. 
Yeah. We're just doing this how how does you, how you should do this. <laughs> the number <laughs> is the int cast of arc v one. Yeah. And then arc v yeah, exactly. Don't forget your semicolon. It's not go. Uh, so now I just have to pass that seven hundred and twenty one here, right? Yes. That was uh Okay. Well, you have a bug in your code, mate. <laughs> because this is XDebug telling you if you see the whole error message. Pipe what you type to to less and you'll see what I mean. Oh, There's two hundred and fifty lines, you don't want to scroll up. Well, so I only test it with small numbers and it works. Ah, so it's the big number that's causing the error. Okay, so let's run it with seven two one and put errors to log, right? Yeah, but that will It's standard output. Just so remove it to you. Ah, maximum function nesting level of 256. Yeah. Do you know what it means? Well, I was assuming that this was tail call optimized and that would be OK, but I'm assuming. It's call optimized. What do you mean by that? Can we disable XDebug for a second? Yeah, sure. And then it'll just, uh, you don't have to disable it. Just type minus N on the command line. It's PHP minus N and then the rest of your line. <laughs> and so, yeah, and know. would you now make this number, um, how can it be inf? That makes no sense. So what is the highest number you can do? Yeah, it's just the numbers are too big. Uh, OK, let's just stick with smaller numbers for now. Yes. <laughs> let's not uh, break it. So let's run right. it again. With, there say, I, yeah, I was, let's pick seven. That's a good number. <laughs> OK, now let's. Let's see how big the file is that this is created. Uh, OK, so we want to do LL bar 10. Yes. We must be this one here. Uh, we'll do yeah. human readable sizes. That's not that. Well, it's just going. What is the human readable of 734? Uh, it's because I'm not actually using LS, and it's an alias for something else, I think. So let's just do old school. It's and still going to be showing 734. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be quiet. <laughs> you want to open up the file? I don't know, because I'm getting loads of things wrong here. Maybe we should just quit over ahead. Um, there we go. There we go, yeah. All right. Now, this makes sense, right? So on your left-hand side, you still have two functions. You have your main and your factorial. Uh, also, the self columns added up together, end up at 100. So there's nothing yep. wrong with it. You can see that spent time in the factorial function is now more. It's now 60 it's 60%. Percent. And your call graph says that vector, factorial calls itself six times, which makes sense for the number seven. Indeed. Yep. Now, there are a few other things in uh, QCache Grind. So at the top, you have a few icons. So you have the open file icon, which mm -hmm. lets you open a new file. You have the the one next to it, the text cycles. cycles. Yeah. So that is the clever bit in QCache Grind. That's if you have a cycle like this, like a recursive function, it the, it can detect that, and um, will then analyze things according to the cycle. So if you get recursion, it's difficult to create a graph because you never know how you end up escaping the recursion, right? I mean, in your case, you can't really see this because factorial itself doesn't do anything else except calling itself. So there's no no issue of it having to be det detected because there's no other output part out of factorial. Um, okay. But if factorial would have called my echo or done something through another function, it will show you these cycles as well. So if you create a function myFactorial that calls factorial, 
and change change that to a new script, then to number, yeah. And that just calls factorial. And then on line 17, you change factorial to my factorial. I mean, could we also just add an echo that says hi with that? Yeah, but echo, call e echoes aren't function calls. All right, gotcha. So if you want to do that, you can use a, a pr uh, printf, for example. Oh. That would work, but echo doesn't. Exactly. I like new lines. OK. Yeah, so but I never, bother with the, I never bother with the constant. I just type slash n. All right. Well, we feel brave when we do 21. Yeah, sure. Right. OK. You should get this 21 times, so that's not so bad. Do you want to check the file size just to see how that. bad that can get? 3.9k. Yep. The files can get big. Yep. Be aware of that. Anyway, let's open it in Qcash coin and see what it says. Whoa. You're making pretty pictures. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Qcash coin. I think you should take a screenshot. This is, this is why people use factorials to do random cool wallpapers and stuff, isn't it? Yeah, because you do get all these weird recursive uh, looks. It's amazing. Yeah, we'll take a screenshot. We'll put it on the show notes. <laughs> Done. Okay. Yeah, excellent. Uh, but yeah, now you see your cycle, right? You see a factorial called my factorial 19 times. But there's some other interesting that happened as well. Look at the percentages. Oh, 642% versus 582%. Which makes no sense. I mean, you can argue that main is a little bit larger because of rounding errors, but that's old, isn't it? Okay. This is uh, this is a bug. Ah. It's a bug, an XD bug. But uh, I haven't figured out how to fix it yet. <laughs> OK, so well, we can skip it, over that for now. I don't, judge. I don't judge. It does not particularly matter, though, because it still allows you to detect the slow path. But in this case, there's so little information to slow. We know what the slowest part is because it's just calling the function over and over again. So can I slow it down with some crappy code? Um, yes. Or do you but... want to go over this first? Is there something here that we should? We yeah, should... I want to point out a few things. Okay. So the icons that I was just talking about, the first one is detecting cycles. Just click it off. Okay. Uh, of course, now you need to resize the screen, I think, because it should have changed information, and I still see the same thing. No, it's not changed on my side either. Can I refresh? No, no if it didn't change, then, then that's fine. So the cycle detection still didn't have to kick in here because it is still not interesting enough because you still only get a circle. Um, this is something that is going to be really hard to artificially create, so I wouldn't bother trying it. We will see this when we run something interesting like Composer, because Composer has a recursive dependency solver in it. Okay. Uh, so the, the only things to, I want to point out one more thing. If on the top right tab, you go to all colors, yep. the top right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And you select okay. yeah. printf on the left-hand side. Ah. It is interesting because it shows you the distance from other functions. So this sometimes tells you if this is all in one or uh, prominently from only one other function, it pretty much means that it might make sense to inline it if it takes up a lot of time. Because function calls, uh, sorry, not a lot of time, if there's a lot of calls there. Because so, function. When you say distance, do you mean how many functions deep the call was? How many, how many different levels, stack levels, there were between the function that you have selected and the one in that list there? Gotcha. Okay. So, not necessarily from the top, but from 
Well, in this case, main is from the top, of course, and the distance is always going to be two here, apparently. So to clarify that, if I had a function, my, my factorial, and I would well, actually make this work, but that would be a distance of three if I updated these calls, right? Right, yes. Three, three stacks, three function calls. So, okay. Right. I think that if you would put a printf in the other function, it'd show you other things, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, recursion is the, probably one of the hardest things to, to actually analyze because things get confusing. But this makes sense now, right? Yeah, I get it. Definitely. Yeah. Shall we look at something more interesting? Can we slow this down first? Does that change yes. anything from a, a Q cache grain point of view? Will we be able to see the bottleneck of one of these functions? You will see that the overheads of the function calls themselves goes away. So yeah, just put a U sleep in in my factorial. But I only say I only want to do it. Uh, so let's say number is divisible by five. Then we do a U sleep. How long do you want uh, to sleep? It's a microsecond. Yeah, 600. That, that's 600 microseconds. Ah, you did not We didn't return this earlier, so I don't think so, we were actually getting a proper view of it, right? No, we didn't actually check the output. Yeah. Should have written a unit test. <laughs> OK, let's, let's run it again. Uh, that actually feel... might mean that we didn't quite get the interesting output that we wanted. To. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that we're back in. So. Yep. We're pushing it's this up <laughs> to 39. Is, we're now at 8K. But yeah, it's definitely growing pretty rapidly. Yep. Uh, so we take a look at main. There we go. So in the, you, now you see it is loaded a little bit different, right? But I'm, I'm not sure why you get to use sleep every single time still. Maybe my terrible coding. That looks okay to me. Yeah, it looks okay to me too. Okay. Uh, so if we, if we did 39, that would mean we should get eight calls to use sleep. I mean, we can... Seven. If we, seven. Uh, if we do seven, we should get less, so... From me. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't understand this. It still seems to be calling. Oh, it's been called five times according to this. That's correct. Yeah, and if you click on in a bot, uh, if you click on all, uh, if you click on colors of you sleep. So select you sleep on the left, and then all colors or, or colors. It says. My factorial called it. So if you double click on my factorial, no, don't click away. I'm trying to explain things. And now go to source code. You can see in my factorial that there were five calls to you sleep yep. and 38 calls to factorial, which makes sense. Indeed. Uh, now turn on back to cycle detection because. Boop, boop. Doesn't change anything, does it? So uh, what? A, no. Uh, right. You okay. selected a different function. Oh, sorry. No. You, go, click on my factorial, please. Yeah. And then leave colors in the top right. So there, is there a question? Uh, Jill Crystal raises a hand. Yeah, if you have a question, you can type it in, and we will read it out and handle that for you. Yeah. No problem. Uh, any in any case, I would like to see in something interesting instead of our okay. contrived examples, because then yes. you can actually explain things. Alrighty then. Yep. So, do you want to do composer simple or go straight to the silly? Let's go to composer simple first. Oh, no. just saying hi. Hello, hello, hi. back. <laughs> uh, 
All I right. can say hello in many languages. How about uh, Mandarin? So you're not going to pick the language. I can pick the languages. Ah. How about Gaelic? Hello. That's simple enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, we won't make this a language lesson. We will. No, let's not do that. <laughs> because I Maybe. don't want to be showing up as a uh, well terrible at languages. So we have this mm -hmm. um, composer that Jason and I threw together yep. with two dependencies. Now, can I just run PHP uh, composer install? I don't know where you have composer. It's just um, installed by Brew. If it's installed by Brew, I would like to see the first line of it. Uh, yep, we can do that. Just type hat and that name. Well, you can do that. OK, so that should work. You need to make sure that the PHP is actually in the path and it is not. So that's what I wanted to check. User bin and PHP means it's in the path. Yep, good. All right. Okay. Run it. OK, the first time. It's, you said you wiped out the caches. So run us once more. Yep. OK, that should be it. And now let's open a file with QCache grind. Yeah, I don't know what name it is, but which one would it be? A uh, lovely 66K, so that's not so bad. Whoa. Okay, yep. definitely actually, interesting sure. for the trivial sure. or simple one. You look at, there was actually a learning moment on the command line. Can you switch to your terminal? You see that, what it says there? Garbage at the end of the cost line. So this is something that has to do with memory profiling. Qcache or cache grinds formats doesn't understand a negative cost. So it doesn't understand that if memory gets freed, you have a negative cost. So although memory profiling exists in Xdebug, the visualization with cache grind isn't always the greatest. Got so it. that's what I wanted to point out here. So I mean, yes. right off the bat, this is I mean, information overload for such a simple composer.json. <laughs> Well, Compose isn't trivial your code, right? It's that's, that, that's true. Yeah, exactly. All so right. how do we start to make heads and tails of this then? Well, yeah, make that a little bit bigger. That's at the bottom screen. Bottom tab. So yeah, drag that up. All right. So by default, what it will do is um, yeah, there will be another learning moment in a second. Well it's what it will do is it will only show anything that's more than 5%, I believe. Okay. But what is the interesting bit? If you follow the, the, the complicated part, the one with the thick arrows, mm -hmm. what is the, what is, just follow, follow it from the top to the bottom and see what it does. Just read out the function names. So we start off with main, and then we've got require far uh, composer bin. Then we've got xdebug handler check followed by xdebug handler restart, followed by xdebug hand, X handler do restart, followed by a PHP pass through. Yes. What can, what can you infer from this? That the complicated path is xdebug and not, no, I don't know. <laughs> so, OK, that is a perfectly good answer. Let's find out then, right? So. If you click on the green one the, that says XDebug handler check, yep, D double click, sorry. And then there's the top select source code. And no then scroll down a little bit. Yeah. Oh, so this is annoying because it uses the far file. Huh. Do you want me just to open yeah, this? Yes, you did. Well, you can't just open it in Vim. Yeah. But it says here I can add the folder of this file to the source folder in this. Yeah, but Qcache Crime doesn't understand far colon slash slash as a file prefix. Oh, got it. OK. See, I have 
don't have this problem locally because I run this I run Composer not through the far file. I just have a checkout of it. But that's too complicated to do here. So <laughs> although Composer might be an interesting thing to look at, because we can't look at the source code, isn't the most interesting thing. But we'll explain what this is anyway. Basically, what it says is that what a check function does is it checks whether Xdebug is loaded. And then it restarts PHP without Xdebug loaded. So the profile that we have is basically just a bootstrap, which then disables Xdebug. So you don't get a profile of something interesting. You only get it of the bootstrapping thing that starts Composer, which where the interesting things are happening. Oh, okay. So cool. Composer finds it necessary to disable Xdebug. So if you want to profile Composer, you need to turn off that behavior. Does that make sense? Yeah, so Composer is Xdebug aware and disables it because generally you're not profiling Composer, but the thing that it's r running. Well, the, the reason why Composer disables Xdebug because they believe that it slows things down too much. OK, so, so how do we? Let's go to the command line. And we basically what we need to do is export a specific environment variable that turns off this behavior. So this is only something you're going to have if you're profiling a composer. Normally, you don't have to do this. So the thing to export is, uh, I need to look this up because I can't remember, is composer underscore allow underscore xdebug equals one, all in capitals. Composer underscore allow underscore xdebug equals one. Equals one, got it. OK, now run it again. See, it now winds at you. OK, you need to make sure, check which files have been created, because I think it has created two files. No, it's, it's, it has overwritten it, so OK. I was... And it's That's... much bigger. Yeah, so open it up, and we'll see again. So what's happened now? So here's something here, but <laughs> it's changed yeah, the path a little bit. Yeah, click on main because it doesn't have a function selected at the moment. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> it's just stuck. It's stuck. It's got stuck somewhere, and I don't remember where. And now, you actually get some interesting information, right? Yeah, this this tree is much larger. The tree is longer, yes. And if you go down a little bit, so there, you see the cycle thing in there on the left hand side. Just, yeah, it's just behind your, uh, you see it there? The cycle six where it says that? Yep, got it. So that is your likely, although I don't know composer code, where it does the recursive loading of stuff. So there is some weird things in there that I don't know how it does. But the branch point where it goes from one to three. Um, so if you go up a little bit in the in the tree, just scroll down. Yeah. So the do run basically calls five functions or five functions that we can see. One takes a third. Yep. One takes a tenth, and one takes a half, approximately. Yep. So you can see here. Well, which two things take up the most amount of time? It's not the one in the middle. <coughs> right, it's that's only ten percent, so we're not interested in that. But the thing that takes the most amount of time is the fifty-two percent here. Yeah, this take right here. Yeah. So, well, if you want to inspect that branch, double-click on what it says there on the do run, and then you get the three further down. So the thickest line is always your slope path. OK, so the, the thickness of the line correlates to how much of the CPU cycles that execution yep. took? Right, OK. Yeah, pretty much. And yeah, well, let's go down and see where it ends up. Uh, I don't know, Composer and uh, so, so, but you see this, the solver. That's basically what I was trying to get at. Yeah, so we come down to do install, and then there's quite a hefty split where we go 6% down the right-hand path. And on the left-hand path, we're at 35% where the majority of that is 20% on 
of some sort of dependency resolver rules. Yep. And then we have quite an even distribution across the next four calls, kind of four yep. to five percent each. Yep. That's basically what it says. So there's probably not much that can be optimized here. Because they they know what I've been doing there. <laughs> <laughs> because this recursive code is so critical to Composer, they spend a lot of time optimizing that. So I think we'd struggle finding a performance bottleneck in it. So True, but, but we do have a very nice way to, to, to exactly. visualize that. It's like you know, right. we can kind of see that call graph and, and see where the time is being spent, which is really interesting. Exactly. So what I would recommend that we do now is we double click on this Composer Dependence and Resolver Solver Solve. To make that our our current node, yeah, that one. And now we just leave this. Don't click on anything else. Just close QCache Ground. Close it. Yeah. Okay. And now let's go to your more complicated example. Okay. So we. Oh, so the reason why I said don't click on anything is because it remembers the function that you have selected. So that allows oh. us to compare it between the two files. OK, so from here, uh, let me just make sure I definitely remember. Okay. So there's no lock file here, which means it's going to have to build a dependency graph. Well, it needs to do that in any case if you type composer update. What I don't want to do is have this guy on it. <laughs> You're running <laughs> composer with X debug enabled. This has a major impact on runtime performance. It does. So this is a pretty large composer. This is the Sulu project. Uh, yeah, just and... show the composer.json. Line 28 down to 100. And of, course, and of course, all of these will have their own dependencies again, too. Exactly, yeah. And a lot of Symphony stuff here, which is going to have complicated dependency trees and Doctrine as well, database stuff, I guess. It's going oh, to be yeah. Quite chunky, so. No, this is a more typical uh, thing that yeah, it takes ages with X with compo with X debug enabled. So this took a minute without X debug. We're in for the long haul here, right? <laughs> yeah, so that would be a good time for people to get some questions and if there's anything they want us to cover over there. The or time, so. alternatively, uh, X debug three that I'm working on <laughs> will speed us up dramatically. And but what, what... I wouldn't suggest we install that right now. <laughs> So what's different in XDebug 3 that gives it the performance uh, performance benefits? Because it is much more clever on when and what when and what it turns on. And there are some algorithms in there, especially that have to do with the stack, that are a lot more uh, are a lot better with allocating memory. So what XDebug 2 does for every time a function is called, it creates this memory structure, which uh, has the function name in it, where it is called from, arguments, and so on and so on. And that structure is pretty big. At the end of the function, this memory is freed. When the next function is called, it's created again, and it is freed again. Now, if you do this two times, that's fine. But typical bigger applications like Composer, this will happen hundreds of thousands of times. Now, what XEBook 3 does, it's instead of allocating and freeing it every time, it basically has a continuous set of memory allocated. Like a ring and will reuse And will reuse it instead of freeing it. So it will detect when it doesn't have enough memory allocated and will allocate a chunk more. But it doesn't free it until the script ends. Ah, OK. So potentially, it uses more memory, but it is significantly faster. Cool. Very cool. And when could people expect XDebug 3 to be, be stable, consumable, usable? Uh, well, I use it all the time. I think, it, well, the tests pass, so I guess that makes it stable. <laughs> uh, but I, don't, I would like to create like a, a tech preview release once I've made all the breaking changes in it, uh, because uh, lots of names of settings change and things like that to make it easier to use and not having to remember all, all 70 different settings that we have. And um, yeah, so the idea is that there will at least be a release candidate when PHP 8 comes out. 
and hopefully a final release soon after that. Um, which, and that is end of November, that's how things stand now. Um, but if you want to play with it, some GitHub uh, should work. But please read the upgrade guide because things have changed. Definitely. Uh, so there's actually a question, or was it a comment? It, it's a comment just saying thank you for Xdebug 3. Well, you are welcome. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people get a lot of, you know, Xdebug is one of those tools that just becomes invaluable once you understand the basics and, and how it works and, mm. and profile in general. And, you know, Xdebug is a profiler for PHP. So, Well, I think most people don't use it as a profiler, but as a, as a, as a step debugger, but yeah. Yeah, uh, I guess maybe it's, it's just where my head is at, you know. I, 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 I see the value in profile and I think it's invaluable for, for any code you have in production, you know, you need to know how it behaves in that environment and profiling yeah. it and, and understanding it, extracting metrics from it, building heat graphs, flame graphs, mm -hmm. all these things. Like there's just so much you can do with this stuff to really then understand again, your application. Yeah. Then again, XDbooks profile is not meant to run in a production environment because it's meant to run a development environment like we're doing now because it has, well, I said has too much overhead, or I maybe had too much overhead. Because with XDBook 3, you would be able to selectively turn it on for just a single request. Oh, so but I could do sampling in my production environment then. Yeah, well, it's not quite that easy. But it, it, as long as you don't enable any features, it doesn't slow anything down beyond like a few percent. But if you want to, to do like real-time application performance monitoring, which is basically what you're getting at the moment. XDBook is not made for that. Okay. It is, it's mo more, more for developers trying mm -hmm. to find performance bot bottlenecks in a normal situation and not depending on how your system is doing at the moment. Ah, um, OK. I understand. Ro Robert's on the, on the chat is having an interesting comment, and I agree with him. <laughs> Which comment, sorry? He says, can you run HTOP in the background so we see the num the numbers jumping around and, and not that Compose is just frozen? <laughs> oh, so apparently you're getting comments much but quite, yeah, much faster than I am because it's only just popped in here now. So yeah, can I run HTOP in the background so we can play it? Yeah. Where, I'm just following the YouTube stream on my other screen. So I see the, the text the moment I type it. Yeah, I've got it coming through the, the streaming software that we use. So I think it's just a little bit of latency, but hopefully not too bad. So, and I bet you by the time I brew and install HTOP, it's probably going to finish. <laughs> yeah. I'll do my best. Do, do, do. Come on, brew. I'll take that I don't away. know how to pronounce that surname. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, if you don't have HTOP, you can just try top instead. <laughs> you won't get a nice color, so. That's true. And I'll probably want to run it on a full screen. Yeah, it's prettier, yeah. Okay, wow. sorted. So PHP uses 98%, it's a fourth line. Firefox uses the 130 percent water. Oh, that's probably because of this other video for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I haven't looked at normal top for ages because I always use H top. Oh. Well, H top is taking its, its sweet time. So, oh, there we go. Let's uh, drop out. There we go. It's much prettier, isn't it? It is. It is. Yep. Mm. But can yes. I filter an HTOP? I'm not, I'm not that familiar with HTOP. Can I filter? Yeah, F4. Well, oh. F4, yeah. I, <laughs> how do you type F4 into a terminal window? Yeah, okay. So now we're just looking at PHP stuff, and we can see Composer. It's quite good on the memory consumption. You know, We're sitting at 2.5% there, and the CPU is, is obviously doing a lot of computation there. Well, it would be nice if it could use all 16 of your cores. I've heard a rumor that potentially Composer 2 has concurrency slash parallel support. Is that right? Okay. I don't I don't know actually. <laughs> yeah, people like I've done a couple of streams now on, on PHP technologies, mostly around containers, and 
the last few times people have been like, oh, you have to use Composer 2 because it does all the downloading in parallel, which I'm assuming means that it spins up a thread per core and has them doing but, the dependency. But, but it is the downloading of files. It's the I.O., the disk I.O., the network I.O. that is parallelized, not the solver. I don't think the set algorithm can be parallelized. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able to break that up. <laughs> that would be very complicated. Like, if, why would, you'd have to map reduce your solver. That would be crazy. Yeah, but because it's recursive, you can't, I think. Ah, good point. So, Do you want to see how big the, the cache grind file is getting? I don't think I'm you not, want to. I'm not sure I do. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, why don't we run a watch? If you don't, I don't have a watch. What kind of machine is this? Uh, OK. Uh, it's but, yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Two don't open the phone, Vim. <laughs> See, this is the thing, right? Those files can get big. The thing is that uh, QCache Grind actually su supports uh, gzip compressed files, but XDebug doesn't do so yet. Actually, I don't think I have a ticket for that. Let me let me add, check that. Uh, Let's see if it's still. I mean, I'm assuming the reason that it's still CPU bound right now means that it's still in the solver stage rather than the downloading stage. Yes, absolutely. Considering it's not going to download any files because it's in your cache. Hoping so. <laughs> but it should be in your cache because you ran it before. I did, indeed. 2.3 gig and counting, CPU is still bound, running for 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah, this takes ages, right? <laughs> I'm really, I really want to see how fast XDebug 3 is now. I think it'd be a good experiment. To... Oh, yeah, definitely. We get to see the improvements there. I may do that in my, my spare time this week. Just a, 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 absolute curiosity now. I think it'd be faster to compile XDebug and run it again <laughs> than waiting for this to get finished. Uh, I just, yeah, I can call it XDebug. I mean, we've got time. <laughs> yep, we have, well, another 20 minutes. Yep. Uh, that was, I wanted to search GitHub. What are you doing now? When the clone next debug, but I'm sure the minute I get over to my terminal, uh, we'll finish. No, 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 I won't finish. Just open another terminal, we'll be fine. Did it change things again? You know, oh. There we go. That's an annoying bug, okay. So clone egg debug. Do I need to as master okay? Do you want me to pull a branch down? Or? No, it needs to be master. All right. Can I, just I, run I haven't. I haven't gotten. I can't see anything you typed now. Oh, that's very annoying. I can't keep switching back and forward. Uh, there's no make fail. What's going on? Uh, I can't see what you're doing, so I can't tell. Ah. Did you, so what are the things that you're trying to type? No, you, you, Let's you, stop the share again and I'll bring it back. Yep. It's just obviously some sort of uh, glitchy bug happening. OK, so share screen two. So I, I cloned it, and I typed make, but there's no make. Yeah, also. <laughs> funny. Uh, there's a process for this. First thing to type is PHP ice. PHP eyes? Oh, eyes, eyes that he got. Yes, it. yes. It should be with an S, but um, recognize. That worked. Dot slash okay. configure. Uh, Robert, it's not a camera output that's lagging. It's um, 
some graphics issue with sharing the screen. I am running the Big Sur beta, so okay, yeah, potentially. Or, or, did it work yet? Yeah, and now that make. No, you got a warning. Warnings are there to be ignored. It's true. For you, I need to fix them. It does sometimes different compilers will give different warnings. I can always ask, yeah. add dash w all, right? That treats warnings as errors, if I remember correctly. So the flex that I've set up for my own compile script does actually do that. It does w all and a whole bunch of other things. OK, it worked. Make install. Uh, what about our running composer process? Is that? Are we okay? You're not on Windows. This works. In Unix, you can overwrite files, and anything that's still memory works just fine. Can you type PHP minus V here? I'm sorry, you kind of dropped out there, minus. V for victory. Ooh, shiny. Shiny indeed. Now, do you want to go to your sudo project? So Not sure whether you can type it. Has dropped, or oh, that dropped drastically. I'm assuming this is about finish. I think it is uh, zipping yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's showing it's showing you now. Yeah. Okay. So show the composer output uh, on your terminal. But here we go. It's in the top one. Okay. That should uh, once this is done, we just run it again and see how much faster it is. This took us what, thirteen minutes. Uh, if I run each top again. Oh. It's been filter 14 and a half minutes. So assuming it finishes in the next 30 seconds, 15 minutes. Okay. And our output down here is currently at 3.4 gig. There okay. we go. 15 minutes. Yeah. It's done, though. Yep. Okay. So should I rename oh, this file before we run it again? Yes. It's a big file. Hopefully, you have enough disk space. Uh, it should be all right. So, bar temp name, and I'll just actually bring it here. Oh, why am I? I should have moved it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so, we want to run composer install again, right? Yep, same thing. Okay, I want to remove the walk file. Well, why? Because the first time you run it, it already did all these things. Then we I ran don't... it with X, then we ran it with compose with composer not disabling xdebug, so it should be the same thing. It should be no difference. But the lock fails are now. So I, does that not mean it doesn't run the solver again? Sorry, what? Because the lock fails there, it won't run the solver again. Yeah, it's but going to use the, the lock fail. first the first profile that we made. Composer disabled X debug, right? And then it ran. Then we used the environment variable to tell Composer not to disable X debug, but we didn't remove any uh, any log files. That was a, we the first time we ran it was on the simple example though. This is the first time we've run Composer install on this repository, uh, this directory. No, we've just run this. Okay. Oh. Oh yes, you're right. You're right. Yes, remove the log file. You're absolutely <laughs> right. All right. Yeah. Sorry. So. Okay. Okay. So once one thing that you need to change, otherwise it's unfair. Mm -hmm. See what it okay. says. What the error message says. Uh, has been renamed. Yes. So we need to change the setting in PHP INI. So you want me to close this? Yeah. Abort this, remove the log file, and then we open PHP. I know. Remove the log file first before we forget. OK. So oh, I hadn't finished it... resolving it, so we're OK. So now we want to modify uh, this. So instead of profile enable, it is xdebug.mode. You can just leave this in there. It doesn't matter. Equals profile. 
you still get a warning, but yeah, it's a semicolon, not a hash. Oh, actually, I don't, I don't know. I think. And then yeah. I can just run to post and install again. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, shall we take a look at that other cache claim just now? Yeah, yeah, let's do that while this runs. Right, let's stop that. <laughs> there's no, there's no lock failure yet. And I'm just going to run it with time. Let's get a, a number from it, so I don't need to run each top. Uh, okay. Okay. So, here, cache grind, and my local file here. It takes some time. <laughs> it's a big file. It needs to it parse three dot three gigabytes of uh, profiling information. Give it another minute. Web grind will have would not have been able to handle this. The file is too big. Yeah, it really just takes this much time. There's not much you can do about it. I wonder what's going to load first. This. That's profile <laughs> or Xbox three in composer. It's still loading it. It is. Oh, we have a progress bar down here. Oh and yeah. It's about thirty percent, maybe maybe twenty five percent. Yeah, this is where the disk disk IO performance of a Mac really sucks. All right, noted. The next time Derek is on the stream, bring my Linux laptop to the party. Mm -hmm. Much faster. I also believe that the error messages are causing a slowdown as well. And I, oh, yeah. and I think that in XDBook 3, I actually made sure that it doesn't show negative information in there. So that will be faster on this side too, just loading the phone. But I'm not 100% certain. Uh, profiler. I'm just creating a ticket for myself. <laughs> so I don't forget that. Today it. Yeah, I think it's only halfway through. Yeah. Not sure what to do about that. <laughs> I wonder how many lines are in there. What does it show in the console output? It, it tells you how many lines, which line it is parsing. So the number in the middle, that's the line number. Yeah, that's a big line. 225 million. My computer's going haywire. <laughs> it's you don't have enough memory, I think. I think that's your problem. It's starting to swap now. No. The file's only three point three gig and I've got thirty two gig of RAM. Yeah, but how do you think what do you think Q Cash Coin does with it? I assumed it was loading three gig into memory. <laughs> Well, you have top, find out. Okay. That was a mistake. Running WC was a mistake. Yeah. I'm only using it's... half my memory. Yeah, Although but I also, also have you have 1.3 use... gig of swap. So. Yeah. That is not a lot of swap for that much memory. I normally have swap disabled. I've just not done it on a Mac. Not sure whether you can actually. I mean, I've swapped disabled on my machine as well, but it has a bit more memory. Yeah, I'm not sure how big that file is. 4,000, 40,000, 100,000. It's half a gigabyte. 427 million lines. And it's about halfway done. Uh, but I think you run into swap here. <laughs> Because it's not getting bigger. Oh. oh, it's done. That's why. 
Act so yeah, you can see now it's stuck on the on the solver, and it now takes ninety percent of the time, right? And you remember previously it was twenty six percent. Yep. But you can see uh, how often things have been called. Yeah, that seven hundred thousand uh, times. times. <laughs> Interesting that this call seven hundred. I mean, that's only 4.77%, whereas the function called twice is 53%. Yep. Oh, but the look at the call graphs down here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look at the 1.4 million and the 1.3 million. <laughs> yeah, that is a lot of function package. calls. Yeah. And this is where Xdebug was actually terribly slow for doing that kind of stuff. I think it's done, by the way. Oh, OK. So can I close this one down? Is it, is it done? Composer is installed, isn't it? It's finished. It has, yeah. It only took 250 seconds this time. So six minutes instead of 15. 15. That's Sorry, that's faster. not true. It's four minutes, not six minutes. Yes, four minutes. OK, so while we shut this one, there's not going to be anything different between this Q cache point and the other one, right? This, the only difference there was the fact that X debug was significantly faster. Exactly, that's yeah. It. So that's what I've been spending my the last few months on making this go not suck too much. Because now, I mean, four minutes is still not great, but it's not sixteen minutes or whatever, fifteen minutes. And I haven't even spent time optimizing composers specifically. So, <laughs> but yeah. Anyway, so if you would ask me, how would I make Xdebug go faster? I would do exactly the same thing. I would use file grind, creating cache grind files and loading them into your know, kcache grind in my case, or qcache grind to analyze the profile and see where it's slow in the exact same way. And the process of identifying what, identifying what is slow here is just following the percentages and the bigger lines and trying to find the functions where most yeah. of the time is being spent. I Absolutely. Mean. Or what is often a good thing of doing if on the left-hand side, you have the inclusive and self. If you click on the word self, mm -hmm. The things at the top are the functions that were most of the time is taken without it calling other functions. OK. And so I just go down the list and see whether there's anything interesting in it. OK. Well, yeah, so you just be sorting this list based on self and yep, looking for the, the functions the where it's spent the most time. The first function I would look at in this case is the, the one that is currently selected. It's called two times, but it takes up 11%. That is a lot. Unfortunately, your composer, <laughs> you don't have the source code locally. So, oh, so this would have showed me the code here. Yeah, so if I had compiled com composer, then I would have. So I guess that, that's an important point here is if you're going to profile, you can't profile something distributed as a far. far. You would have to have that code built. Well, you can you can profile it, but you can't see the source code. Yeah. Okay. Because Qcache grind or Qcache doesn't understand the file format, right? And if we take a look at the you know the callers, we can see where that function is being called from. Do we get any visibility beyond that, or is it is it just? If, if you click on callers, you can see where it's called from, but you can also see that in the graph already. Because the one that is selected is the red one in the middle. Okay. And if you can see what is if in the in the call graph here down here, you can see who, who called it, because it's the node above it. Ah, right, gotcha. Okay. But you can and see this other function is called two to two million times. Down here. Uh, the blue one. Oh yeah, that's, there we go. Okay, got it. So is there a any any difference that we would apply like right now I, I feel like we're kind of identifying functions calls based on their CP, CPU performance and mm. is there anything different that has to happen if I want to find bad actors with memory allocations yep you see the word time in your menu bar oh yeah, yeah, yeah. ah change it to memory <laughs> <laughs> oh, so simple it's the same idea. But then I have to make a big caveat here: is that memory profiling is not nearly as accurate because, as I mentioned, it is impossible to see the negative use of memory when things get freed. And also, PHP's garbage collector can kick in at any time. 
Right. So, so sometimes you see memory being freed that isn't actually getting freed at the point where it says it is going to be free because it's a garbage get like the kicking in. Now with Composer specifically, that is not a problem because Composer disables PHP's garbage collector because it would make it two or three times as slow. And you don't really care in command line applications, right? Yeah, because I guess typically they're not long running. They, their PHP time will exit, is, I guess. Right. So anything where you, you like run like a, a PHP process that you want to run for hours, you want to have the garbage collector turned on. But if it's a one-shot script, then you yeah. don't really care. That makes sense. And yeah, you don't really want to wait for garbage being collected. OK. Uh, is there anything else you feel we should cover before we wrap this up? Because I feel like you know, I don't think we have anything <laughs> at the moment that I still can talk about. I mean, I would suggest you uh, play around with your own PHP applications. I mean, the people are listening, and you're, you, of course, as well. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. I that would was... say. <laughs> That was awesome. Um, that was really insightful getting that I look into how this works. And it's just so much information. Like, it's a really yeah, cool tool that we have the ability to just inject. Like, I mean, installing XC bug and running that in our application was so trivial. Like, that was great. Yep. You turn it on. Uh, and that's pretty <laughs> much it. <laughs> and the speed performance of XD bug 3 was fantastic. So, great job there. That's like, I, I didn't, I knew. You said it was faster. I wasn't expecting to go from 15 minutes to sub four minutes. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either, to be fair. <laughs> Surprised your own self. Awesome. Yeah, All right, but, well, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I know with Compose, it is the recursive calling that happens so often. And I know that was a contentious point. So. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to join me and go through all this. This was really useful. I'm sure others are going to find this fantastic as well. So uh, thank Hopefully. you again, Derek. I'll, I'll tweet out a link to the video once it's ready. All right, perfect. Well, thank you again. I'll speak to you soon. Everyone watching at home, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.